Hey, what's going on guys? It's Hanako here, back for some more Katawa Shoujo. And we are continuing on with Hisao's path. Uh, we're only one part in and he's already cheated on me twice. Um, he's had sex with, well, he's had sex with me once. Um, he's had sex with Lily three times, so, uh, and I believe he's, um, He's trying to get into Shizune's pants at the moment as well, too, so um, he can go fuck himself. Uh, I hope he burns in a house fire so he knows how I feel. Well, that took a turn for the worse. Hey guys, it's Panda here. Um, after some very dramatic and emotional speaking from Hanako there, um, let's try and get it back onto the normal uh, swing of things there. That was very odd. It was kind of out of the blue really. I don't think I've ever heard Hanako talk like that before. It's very strange. I think she'll be alright though. I think she's fine. I hope she hasn't actually found out if I'm cheated from her or not. You know? I don't think she knows that I had sex with Lily three times and that I'm trying to get in the pants of Shizune at the moment. But, ah, you know. The little things in life. Alright then, I don't think I'd be missing much. What do you have in mind? Oh, that's right, we were going to go do something fun with these two. My eyes narrow with suspicion as the thought crosses into my mind. Wait, this isn't just some trick to get me in to do more student council stuff, right? Da -da -da. No, of course not. And that's a really mean thing just to assume that, like that, Hachan. Wait, I'm not reading the wrong thing, am I? I'm sure I've already read this. Sure, that's the right one. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, I know why I would have thought I've already read it before, because I have read it before. This was one of the parts where I tried to do it on my new computer, but it failed epically because you couldn't hear my voice at all. Dot, dot, dot. And besides, you're in the student council now, remember? And if we wanted you to do something for us, we wouldn't have to trick you. Ha ha ha! kind of coercion this is, that is new to me. Only two pretty girls could pull it off. I allow myself to relax a bit. Maybe I'm being too paranoid. It seems like they may really just want to hang out. Nevertheless, no tricks? No tricks. Stop being so paranoid. Well, if you say so. Suddenly, I realize I am still wearing pajamas. What if you slept naked, Sal? What if they knocked on your door you are, okay, maybe you have the sense to not open the door if you're sleeping naked to someone that's just knocked on there, but, um, maybe, you know, you are still kind of half asleep, uh, uh, just open the door subconsciously, and then there you are, standing there with your willy out, um, possibly you've got morning wood, and these two beautiful girls just standing in your doorway, completely shocked, and, um, you would have scared them off. What would have happened then, you know? What would you have done there? What would... Oh, I thinking, yeah, no. I wonder if you'd let me dress up first? Dot dot dot. Yeah? Why, Hachan? You'd look just fine. I'd still prefer wearing something else. I close the door before letting them in. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, if she gets a chance to reply and quickly pull on my uniform. Stepping back into the hallway, I see Shizune and Misha are engaged in an animated discussion. I wonder if people discussing in sign ever accidentally poke each other in the eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if Misha did. While I'm contemplating this, she soon taps me on the shoulder impatiently. Dot, dot, dot. So, we're planning on slipping into town. Remember that tea shop we were at on Wednesday? Tea shop? Dot, dot, dot. You don't remember? Oh, you mean that cafe? Tea shop. It's called the Shanghai. China is a birthplace of tea, you know. Come on, Hachan. I'll even treat you today. <clears throat> ah, not me, not me. I mean, Shachan. Ha <laughs> I don't know. It's nice. It's really relaxing. It's like half cafe, half restaurant, half sophisticated, half library. The half library is Yuko. What? It's a lot of halves. Misha doesn't seem to notice that. 
So, come on, it's not often that we have this much free time. If you're busy though, you don't have to. It's not like your presence is absolutely, absolutely required. Wait, what? Absolutely, absolutely required. Ha 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 ha! I've never seen more weakly disguised reverse psychology in my life. I feel kind of tired today, and my teachers in my classes might want to know where I am. Maybe. On the other hand, I haven't really been into town or at all since I've gotten here, so this is a good reason to head there. Head there. Also, I could use something to eat. If it's Shizune Street, even better, I'm totally broke. I highly doubt she's actually going to pay for you. Alright, let's go. Lead the way. Great! <clears throat> we make it to the tea shop with a 15 minute walk. It seems that we are only customers... that we are the only customers around. Is it always this quiet in the morning? By that, I mean, is it always this empty? I'm going to stop saying the dot dot dot. I'm sure you know that that's Shizu talking. No, this is kind of weird. Hey, it isn't a bad thing though, right? You're right. We take our seats at a large... Jesus, how tall am I? They're both looking like up here, like I'm fucking ten feet tall. God damn. Either that or I haven't sat down yet, but Jesus Christ, I must be tall if, I, if I've sat down. We take our seats at a large square wooden table, and it hits me that I don't know what this place serves. I just went with what Yuko recommended last time, so just go with what Yuko recommended again. Hey, is there a menu or something? No? It's a strange amount of zest. Like a lemon. So, Chan, have you decided what you're going to order? I look around the store, I can't see anything resembling a menu. I don't understand, what's up with this place? What gives? Is this some kind of secret shop? Can you normally only enter here with a secret handshake? Some kind of blink and a nod? You need someone to vouch for you? A blood oath? Damn it, it was nothing like this last time. I don't know, the last time I think I just got coffee. What do they serve here? Tea! Very helpful, Misha, thank you. Not just tea, right? Not only tea, there's other stuff too, right? Clearly! Fucking you are, you, oh man. You are just being extremely helpful. Clearly. Like what? There are no menus here. Where are the menus? They're playing another joke on me. There is no way out of this. All I can do is brace myself for the inevitable oncoming... I almost w want to walk out of the store, but I'm already sitting down. You fuck you guys, I'm out of here. See you later. It would be improper to leave now. The unspoken rule of polite social conduct block my exit of, like a wall of fire. Yeah, you sure? You sure? Because I can leave. I can fucking leave. I can... That's it. That... Fucking it. Head it up. Fuck you all. Okay, maybe I was kidding. I'm back. It's alright, I'm back. I was only kidding. It's okay. I still love you all. I'm back. Okay. It's just a joke. Just calm down. I decide to play it safe. I'll order what they order. If it's acceptably manly enough. Oh yeah, they'll probably order like pink lamingtons or something. Something really manly. Yeah, uh, uh, what do you got on this menu here? Steak. Oh, beer, pink lemmington. Yeah, I love the uh, pink lemmingtons, please. Yeah, yeah. Very manly. Yeah. Why don't you two order before me? Ladies first. Ooh, good, good idea, you know? Get them to order. Trick them into ordering first. See what they're going to have and then just base your order off that. Although if they're only having tea, well then you're fucked. Dot dot dot. Damn it, I thought I was going to say I wasn't going to say the dot 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 anymore. Well played, Hachan, but we already ordered. What? How is that possible? When? How? From who? They rang up. They do deliveries. We're regulars. We come here so often that we don't have to do that anymore. I don't believe you. Well, I guess you've had enough. We're sitting on the menus, of course. Oh, you motherfuckers. Ha 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 ha. 
Wait, uh, the, I'm sorry, but the Shanghai seems to be a pretty big place. At least maybe, oh, maybe maybe ten tables at the most. So if we say those tables seat at least four people um, at each table, it's fucking forty menus that you're sitting on. Twenty between the two of you. I mean, come on. I'm sure I would have noticed that if that was the case. I look around at the other tables. There are no menus on any of them. That means they must just keep them in a big stack near the door or something. What a thing to sit on, and what spread, and what speed to grab them so quickly. Either that or you're extremely slow to sit on. Well, whatever. Can I have one of them? You can take one if you want. If you want, but you're not that kind of person. Would you do something that lascivious? 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 Hmm. Isn't that right? She has trouble with big words. Like me! I tell them that I'd just like some coffee and put my head down on the cool tabletop. Coffee? This is a very high class establishment and you're going to order coffee? Tea wouldn't be much more higher class. I can tell they're messing with me again. In that case, I'll have whatever you're having. Chan. Chan is drinking a special tea that is only grown in remote areas of India. The tea is still handmade by a tribe of tea makers who have passed the methods down in their families for generations. You're kidding, right? Tea makers? A tribe of tea makers? There's no way there are tribes in India that are, that, that are just tea makers. You're, you're kidding. You're taking the piss. I've got to say you're taking the piss. There's no way that's real. They must wade through alligator-infested waters here, you're taking the piss. To obtain the leaves once a year, on each trip, some do not make it back alive. Yeah, you are definitely taking the piss, Misha. This is not funny anymore. Don't fuck with me. I can't drink that. I would feel too guilty. Then I'll have what you're having. I don't know what I'm drinking. Ow. Fine, then I want the tea that people died for. No, never mind. I'll have coffee. Not guilt trip set on there. If this is a very high class establishment, then they should have very high class coffee, right? No one died for it, right? Good move, good move. Perfect answer. There is no way they can stand against it. Shizun strokes as if to say well played. Yeah. Good shit, my boy. That still didn't answer my second question. Yuko! What's up, girl? Misha calls for Yuko, who brings over our drinks in a single incredibly tiny yellow cake with a little black plastic fork stuck in it for each of us. It's like one of those little petite desserts you get at one of those fancy restaurants. Look, kind of like the one that me and Lily went to on our first date, you know? One of those really small, they look really fancy little like desserts or sponge cakes or something like that. They end up costing you about $30. Major rip off. I eat my cake in one bite, amazed at how it's probably the least filling thing I've ever eaten. Hachan, do you have any plans for tomorrow? Misha takes a gulp of her tea, something sounding suspiciously high class even though it looks like ordinary tea. She drinks with incredible recklessness considering how hot it is, the exact opposite of Shizun or Lily. Plans? This sounds ominous. Ominous. Plans? Yes. Yes, I am incredibly busy tomorrow. In fact, I have so much to do that I will not have any free time at all. That's right, none whatsoever. And everything I have to do is extremely important. Very, very important. Mr. Google's clearly not buying it, and then signs it all back to Shizun, who nods slowly and deliberately while looking very unamused. No. Got hurt, Shizun? Suddenly, she leans forward, start staring analytically at my face like a human lie detector, waiting for the smallest tell to give me away. After at least a minute of this, she sits back down in her seat and takes a sip of tea. Okay, Hachan, if you're that busy, we don't have anything to do tomorrow, so we thought maybe you would want to hang out with us at the festival. You're new here anyway, right? Right? So we thought we would show you around and have some fun together, but if you're that busy, we understand. Oh well, oh well. So both of them shrug together in perfect sync, as if they've rehearsed it. Ahahahahaha! <laughs> Hachan, you're so paranoid. 
and you'll never beat me anyway, so why bother getting so worked up about it? Hey, I beat you before. You shrugged as if to say, well played. I'll have you know. Haha, <laughs> wow, Shichan. Beat you? What are you talking about? She talking about the coercion? I never realised that that was just a game to her. I thought it was the only, I was the only one who saw it as competition. Oh, she's excited now. You know, eh, do you, Shichan? Because I don't. What? <laughs> you can't outwit me. Ah, oh, well, Chan, not me. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What are you talking about, Chan? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about, Shizun? I can see Shizun smiling craftily, daring me to enter this battle of wills and wits with her. That's a crafty smile. It's more like a <laughs> smile. When he is pushed to the edges of despair, a man who has no... Oh, this... Ha I'm sorry. This has to be said in a movie ma in a movie guy voice. Movie trailer voice. When he is pushed to the edges of despair, a man has no choice but to sink or grasp at the fleeting wisps of hope, fighting with all his power against the inevitabilities of his fate and struggle against the impossible. For even if he fails, at least fail knowing that he dared greatly. Or something like that. Well, we'll see about that. Don't underestimate me. Don't you have to follow through to make good on that, Hachan? Ah, uh, well, I could get lucky. Don't count out count out that possibility. You won't. I will. Wait. Let's make a wager on it then. I don't care about competition. That's a blatant lie. <laughs> Wait, what exactly do you mean? It's okay if you don't know. Neither do I. Wahahaha. <laughs> I'm so fucking confused right now. It's very hard to determine who I'm talking to, even though it says who's talking. But between Misha and Shizun, it's... Ugh. Ugh. So it's settled then. Alright, alright. What? Didn't you hear what I just said? Now all that's left is the stakes. What the winner wins, or more interestingly, what the loser loses. Hey! This is a very dangerous game I'm playing. Shizun herself is a very dangerous girl. Very dangerous girl. If she can only think in terms of winning and losing. If she views every time that I talk with her as some kind of battle of wills, I don't think I could take it. That kind of thing drives people insane. She's too machevelin. Yeah, no, I was trying to read that word out properly, but I messed it up. Before this, I'd assume she was just kind of stoic. But nevertheless, I'm interested. In hindsight, I realised that I just challenged her to what is essentially a duel without any rules that won't end until one of us... What? I guess that's... That, that's so vague. What are the conditions for winning or losing? The first person to kill stupid losers? I don't know, I've never had to think of anything like this before. Never. Never. Never, never. Never, never. Never, never. Shut up, Mersha! Do you have never gambled a chan? Well, we're not old enough. I'm surprised you two have. Oh, come on. It's just for fun anyway. Between friends. It's about causing humiliation, suffering, and absolute despair. Isn't that the point? Oh, that's, this sounds like a lovely game. Humiliation, suffering, and absolute despair. Oh, this is just... Yep. Sounds like a lot of fun. Shizun puts a finger to her temple thoughtfully. Hmm, uh, how about this? A chan, if you lose, you have to go to school one day without any pants on. And if you lose, you have to go to school with no pants on. Are you insane? Although, in comparison to what I was afraid she would say, it's pretty mild. Can't we just bet money like normal people? <coughs> It's not like you could match my wager if we did. Now it's your turn, but nothing perverted, understand? Oh, right, so... You're more than welcome to put the bet up against me that I have to go to school naked, basically. But if I said the same thing, it's perverted. Fucking females. Goddamn. Ha 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 ha! I think I need more time. This is going to have me constantly on edge for weeks what I said after taking that Viagra. 
Okay, come on, you should both hurry up. Your drinks are getting cold. I quickly down the rest of my coffee as Shizun does the same, staring at me with a fierce look of competition in her eyes. She just looks really, like, childishly excited. Like, <laughs> It seems like a waste for her to be gulping down something that someone may have died for for her to enjoy. Hey Chan, are you sure you don't want to hang out tomorrow? A lot of people are looking forward to it. You don't want to miss out. I mumble unintelligibly at her. I don't really understand. Neither do I. It's a mumble, you're not supposed to understand. Shizun's drink is smaller, but I can consume mine faster. You down that drink, Sal. You down it. If Shizun finishes her drink first, she might skip out on paying, leaving me to pick up the tab, even though she said the drinks were on her. I, I knew it. I fucking knew she would skip out on it. Because I have no money on me, I would be humiliated, and therefore this could be considered a loss. I'm sure Yuko wouldn't really mind if, you know, you just paid her it library or something, although to be honest she doesn't own the shop, she just works there, so she probably would get in shit for doing something like that, and then yeah, you kind of be in the shit altogether. If I finished first, the laws of chivalry would make me look like a jerk, as I would need to run out of this tea house, leaving her to pay for everything. That could also be considered a loss, she would use that. In the event of a draw, she may attempt to run out the door, and I'll probably do the same. This might lead to a collision at the door, which will be which will be humiliating, but not overly so. And Misha would be left to pick up the tab. A drawer it is, then. This is really childish. I'm a little disappointed in Shizun and myself. Well, Hachan, it'd be really nice if we could all celebrate how we put everything together for the festival by taking a look at our handiwork. Misha seems oblivious to the fact that an epic battle of wills is raging in front of her. I nod slowly and down the last of my coffee. 